My name's Ron Hauser. Uh, I'm an artist. I, I paint in oils, and uh, I've kind of been blessed with a gift. Uh, I only started painting in 2001. I had uh, been working with a company for quite some time, for about 25 years, and had an accident, and it disabled me, and uh, my company retired me. And I wasn't quite ready, so I was a little, little bit taken back by it. Uh, kind of down in the mouth about it and had to have some surgeries and a lot of therapy and uh, my wife had told me one time, she says, Brian, she says, you're, uh, you're really, uh, you need to do something to kind of pull yourself around. So she suggested, she says, why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself and go down in the basement and paint. And you know what? That's exactly what I did. I went down in the basement and I found some old paint and, uh, and some canvases and everything and I started painting some things that I really liked which were cowboys and western stuff and some Native American pieces. And my wife came down one day about two months later and she looked at me and she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing what you told me to do. I said, I'm painting. She says, I wanted you to paint the basement, not paint in the basement. Anyways, uh, there you go. I can't get anything right. But she got behind me. We went out and she bought some new paints for me, palettes and everything, and an easel. And uh, before you know it, I was painting a lot of different things, a lot of different scenes and things that I liked and that I wanted. And I love history. History's been a very, very big, fond subject of mine. And all kinds of history, American history, sports, etc. Uh, and, and a lot of horses. So I started painting those things. Next thing you know, people wanted to buy them. I was ended up being featured by Cowboy Magazine in uh, 2005, and uh, I was called by uh, a Silver Dollar City. Silver Dollar City City had me come down, and uh, they purchased uh, about ten thousand dollars worth of my prints. And just one thing led to another, led to another, and I've been involved in this ever since. Another unique thing was was that uh, we had a little grandson that had been born just right before my injury. And he was on life support and quadriplegic. And to this day, he's 14 and a half years old. And he is still on life support and quadriplegic. But he's kind of unique. He rides horses. Now, have you ever heard of that little boy on life support and quadriplegic riding horses? He's one of the only ones. I've devoted my time to him and also to raising funds for organizations like Therapeutic Horsemanship out in Winsville, Missouri. Uh, there's some unique things about uh, riding horses and it's very therapeutic for children that have back problems and, and bone structure problems. I'm a mason. I've gotten involved in a lot of Masonic charities, a lot of different things. Uh, involved in the clown units. We've made clown pictures. Uh, ended up being the cover of the uh, Shriner Clown uh, Circus Magazine and even painted my grandson who laughs a lot. And to me, I always think he's climbing around. He's painted in the picture. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with it. I get a lot of requests from people to do different paintings. I do a lot of commission work. Uh, I paint uh, Masonic paintings. Uh, I have a Scottish background. We do a lot of Scottish paintings. Uh, we've got sports. I'm a member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. And as you can see right now, this is Lou Brock, which is one of our famous Cardinal uh, players. And we do. I do a lot of football, baseball. Uh, something that I do want to mention is that I do believe that sometimes art uh, runs in the family. Uh, my birth mother was an artist and my birth father was an artist. Uh, I didn't live with my birth father, but uh, people that have seen my work uh, say that it looks very, very similar to his. And uh, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I've got a, uh, a daughter that actually is an art teacher. So I do believe it does run in the family. Uh, I didn't have any formal art background. I had a minor in art when I was in college. And uh, I started uh, drawing and painting and sketching probably as a little young, young boy, just like a lot of kids do. And evidently I had a flair for it. Uh, you know, a lot of kids would ask me to sketch or draw something in a cartoon or a picture of a car or whatever, etc. I do have the ability to teach others. And people come to me and take private lessons in my art studio. 
but recently, in the last three years, I've actually become an instructor and a, a painter, uh, paint, a teacher of the oil painting at the community college out in St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, one thing that I do like to do is that I like to paint history, I like to paint people, I like to paint different moments in history. One of the things that I also do is that in order to keep in keeping myself involved in uh, uh, helping others, I am a speaker for uh, different philanthropic groups uh, to help them raise money and uh, it also helps me a little bit too. One of the things I did do in, in uh, 2005 was I developed and put together a large trailer. It's a gallery. It's one of the only traveling galleries in the country and it's been all through about 23 states and I've gone to different shows, different horse shows, different uh, uh, conventions and different uh, fairs, etc. Uh, and it's been kind of unique. It gives me an opportunity to paint in front of people and I do love painting in front of people and talking to them. As I said before, I don't mind people watching me because I love it when they can turn around and look at my work and say, hey, I know who that is. I try to be very, very realistic. So I'm still going to be involved in uh, things like uh, I, I, I do some television interviews uh, in St. Louis. We've done some interviews with the different channels there talking about making a difference because I do believe that we, took, we should take and make a difference with the talents that we're given. And I do believe that I was given a God-given talent, so I need to pass it forward. Most recently, in the last few years, I've actually been able to uh, declare myself an international artist because I've sold a lot of my artwork to people in other countries. I've got people uh, having my artwork hanging in Japan, Australia, England, Scotland, uh, Canada, uh, a lot of different places throughout the world. And again, I do a lot of commission work for, for people. So. Uh, I, I consider myself an international painter. Uh, I do a lot of history painting, actually from Europe. Got a lot of pieces that I've done that talk about European history. And a lot of the pieces that I paint also have to do with the founding fathers of this great nation that we live in. I am a Mason, and a lot of the history of our country is based on Masonic foundation for our founding fathers. I've got pieces of my artwork hanging in several museums all around the country and in different places, or, uh, in some of them in the, in the world, there is one at Roslyn Chapel, uh, which was, uh, believe it or not, it, it's, it's actually my 23rd great-grandfather, Robert the Bruce. Uh, there's a museum in, Saint, in uh, Washington, D.C. called the House of the Temple. And at the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., there are two paintings hanging there. One is Jacques de Molay, and it hangs in its own private spot in, the, in Washington, D.C. If you go up there for a private tour, uh, you can go in and you can see that. And this is another very special piece that most recently uh, was put up. Uh, that temple has the largest collection of Robert Burns poems, and it's in the room called the Burns Room. And I have a painting that I have done of Robert Burns. It's my impression of Robert Burns, and it's been hanging there uh, for the last couple of months in a very, very special place. So I do invite you the next time you're in Washington, D.C., stop on in, get a tour, you'll be able to go in and see it.
unlimited by your imagination. I want to tell you thank you, adios, and we'll see you later. This is a memorial for my grandson, Christian James Miller, born January 15, 1999, and was called home September 15, 2017. The following is a Channel 9 TV special that was put together to give a tribute to Christian's wonderful celebration of life. And the story of an artist and the grandson gone too soon, and what each did for the other. Christian could bring out the best in people. He really did. He brought out the best in me. And I knew what I was probably going to do. Great to see you, Ron. It's all next on Living St. Louis. I'm Ruthie Zell at Treehouse of Greater St. Louis in Wentzville. This is where our story ends. It begins at an art exhibit in downtown St. Louis with a painter at his easel. And as you'll see, this story took a different direction from the one we originally envisioned. Ron Hauser was engrossed in his work when we first met him in 2017 at his exhibit in the Missouri Athletic Club. The themes of Hauser's canvases largely revolve around the Old West, sports, and history. And this man right here, King Louis IX, he was in charge of really developing the Renaissance and bringing it to Paris. Hauser came to our attention when we learned about a workshop he had planned to guide young artists in how to market what they create. There's so many young artists out there that just, they do beautiful work, they have nice things, but they don't have the clue of the first thing they need to do to get out and start selling their product. And this is my traveling art gallery. One of the ways Hauser sells his products is at arts and crafts shows, like the annual Festival of the Little Hills in St. Charles. Come and look here and I'll show you. Hauser has his methods for standing out in a crowd in a venue like this. The trailer he uses to transport and display his paintings is a billboard on wheels. You can see this was a gallery. And uh, this particular case here, I do bronze sculptures too. And I had my bronze sculptures displayed in here. Health issues forced Hauser to cancel his art marketing workshop, so we put his story temporarily on the shelf. Then a few months later, we visited an art class he teaches in the evening at St. Charles Community College. Try to work on some of that uh, magenta, that darker magenta now in here, and then your lights. Hauser teaches painting with the grid method. In a nutshell, grid lines are drawn on a photo or other image the artist wants to reproduce. Corresponding grid lines are then drawn on the canvas or other work surface. With the first grid is a guide, a sketch is drawn over the second grid followed by the artist's brush. And there's a reason In our conversations with Ron Hauser, we always heard anecdotes about his beloved grandson, Christian Miller of St. Peter's. It is Christian's story that ultimately became the focus of this story. Christian was born in 1999 with a very rare genetic condition that plagued his entire body. His extremely weakened skeletal and muscular structures stunted his growth and left him a quadriplegic. Damage to Christian's windpipe made him reliant on a respirator and made normal speech impossible. But he did develop a set of sounds and facial expressions that helped him communicate with family and friends. Christian's grandfather played a big role in the round-the-clock care the boy needed. Christian could bring out the best in people. He really did. He brought out the best in me. As a grandfather, I probably got a little closer to Christian than most grandfathers would do because I got to be in his day-to-day -day care. Uh, I got to see him at moments where 
his life was in my hands, which would just scare the living daylights out of you. Uh, I got to see him at his finest. I got to see his sense of humor. I got to see the joy that he brought to people, that he put a smile on everybody's face. Christian's parents, Julia and Patrick Miller, made it a priority to give their son the kind of childhood experiences other kids might take for granted, like sled rides through the snow in the winter. Christian also looked forward to his horse rides at Treehouse, better known as therapeutic horsemanship. He loved riding horses. Not only did it help him physically, but it helped him mentally. He had a great social relationship with his sidewalkers that were here, and they would physically hold him up until he got too weak, and then his grandfather made him this special adapted saddle, so it was more like a cushioned chair. It had a cushioned back, and it had armrests so he could rest his hands there, and then he still had two sidewalkers. He was never alone on the back of the horse. All the people that worked with him with Christian and with Ron, his artistic grandfather, were very, very inspired by working with that young man. Christian became very attached to this old therapy horse named Stoney. Eventually, Stoney died, and Christian became too weak to continue his riding schedule. The boy's condition also made him prone to severe respiratory infections and potential lung failure. Though he fought valiantly, the continued assaults on his frail body were eventually more than he could overcome. Christian Miller died September 15, 2017. He was 18 years old. When Ron Hauser learned of his grandson's death, he was vacationing with his wife and some friends in Canada. The news was devastating. On the drive back to St. Louis, Hauser said it rained, it was windy, and the midday sky was nearly pitch dark. Then suddenly the wind and rain stopped and the sun broke through the clouds along with a bright rainbow. For Hauser, it was a personal and creative epiphany. And I told everybody there, I says, Christian's fine. Christian's fine. I said, I can see right now, he's up there, He's riding stony, he's got Angel with him, and they are absolutely just fine. And I knew what I was probably gonna do. Great to see you, Ron. What Hauser did was return to Treehouse with a gift, the creation of which helped him work through his grief and honor his grandson. It's a painting titled Over the Rainbow. It depicts Christian free of his wheelchair and breathing tube. He's riding his horse, Stoney, and running alongside them, Christian's dog, Angel, who passed away years earlier. The sunbeam and rainbow were inspired by what Hauser saw on that Canada to Missouri drive. We are very, very happy that Ron decided to unveil it here at Therapeutic Horsemanship at TH. Christian loved riding and we loved having him and we're very thrilled. So what started as a glimpse into marketing art evolved into paying tribute through art. We're put here to leave a mark. Best mark you leave is when you're leaving a mark about somebody else. And that's tonight's Living St. Louis. We like to hear from you, especially story ideas. Shoot us an email or reach us on social media. I'm Jim Kircher. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Christian, for all the joy and gifts you have shared with friends, family, and the hope to those who needed you. Keep sending down your beautiful Chrissy Sky paintings that you do so well to make your presence known Ride high, Christian. Ride high.
drops like lemon drops High above the chimney top That's where you find me Oh, somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly And the dream that you did to Thank you.